A huge thank you to all of you for all the hard work, the, 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 the sleepless nights, the, the lack of sleep, the, the stress, the anxiety, the exhaustion and, and everything that you're doing. We are so grateful. You're all in my thoughts and uh, Catherine and I and all the children talk about all of you guys every day. Um, so we're making sure the children understand the sacrifices that all of you are making. Thank you so much for sparing your time. I know how busy you guys must be at the moment. I, I, I sort of wanted just to quickly touch base with you just to hear how, how things are going, how you're all coping, what it's like at the moment. Um, maybe just a quick update from all of you about your relative um, experiences in your departments as to what you're, what you're seeing and how it's a bit different than the first lockdown. So this is worse than the first wave. I think that's probably the first thing we want to say. I guess things started to become very evident to us that things were heading in the wrong direction actually a couple of weeks before Christmas and then the week before Christmas that became increasingly evident um, and things probably hit a major crisis point really around the four-day Christmas weekend which is when the already enhanced levels of staffing that we had were no longer adequate and we had to mobilize large amounts of extra doctors and nurses um, currently we have COVID patients on our surgical wards, our, all of our medical wards, our paediatric ward. So we've had to move paediatrics to another hospital, um, and in our day unit, um, we have had to give treatments, which we would normally give, uh, on intensive care, something called non-invasive ventilation. So an assisted form of breathing not quite being on a ventilator, we are using that on medical wards uh, and are currently using that at about 150% of the level that we used at our peak in April. So we had a harsh first wave with a, a rapid spike and then a rapid come down. Um, and I guess what was daunting for everybody is not knowing what's going to happen next. The, the horror of the situation, the challenge of the situation has been met by an incredible effort of people to come together. Our medical and nursing workforces have never been more stretched, but never been more together as a group. So the cohesiveness, the commitment to patient care is, is a wonder to behold, and it's a wonderful thing to see. Um, I think people are tired. People knew this was gonna happen, but we're still tired. And between the two waves, there was so much work to prepare for this wave, but also to try and get everything going again and back to the levels they were. So people are tired, but there's a real sense of mission and a real commitment to provide the best care we can to the people of East London for as long as we can. I hope that's of help. That's a very good synopsis, Carla, thank you. And it kind of, um, it, it echoes many of the, the comments and um, evidence that I've, I've heard of in the last few weeks. And it has clearly been climbing at a quite staggering rate across the country. And I think in the first wave, it was quite a bit more patchy in terms of which areas got hit hardest. But it sounds like most of the country is getting a really hard time at the moment. Um, and Alicia, is that your views of, of what's going on at the moment? Yeah, definitely. I'll have to echo what um, Carlo has been saying. Um, in terms of nursing having to learn new skills and been working on a surgical ward and now having to be transferred to a medical ward. Um, nurses and outpatients, you know, we had to do a lot of um, re redeployment of staff, but they have been, re they have, you know, just come to the forefront and they have learned the new skills and they're, they're supporting each other. I think one thing that we need at the moment because of staff being so stretched is everyone coming together. And I think Comerton, we are achieving that. We are, a small hospital, but it's a family-based hospital. It feels like family, you know, we're supporting each other to get through this difficult time. It does feel worse than the first wave. It it it, it is it is a lot to take on. Um, but I think we're doing a good job at it. And Alicia, am I right in saying that you um you've only been matron for a year and you had to handle CQC sort of inspections as well as COVID? <laughs> Yes, um, I think it's a quick way of being a matron. I had to learn <laughs> quickly navigating through um, CQC inspections. And when I thought, okay, let me get into my role, COVID. <laughs> yeah, normal, COVID normal yeah. bit of a warm up period before you have yeah. to be thrown in the deep end. But I think you've yeah. been straight in, haven't you? Yes, I had to swim. <laughs> there was no option to sink. 
No, you're still smiling, Alicia. That's very important. And in terms of your mental health support, Nazi, what, what sort of things have you done recently to kind of combat some of the, the, the stresses and difficulties that everyone's been facing? Yeah, sure. So um, I think the kind of things that we've done as, as staff of, and I'm sure Catherine will expand on it, uh, there were things like the wall room that was put in, which is a place that you, where you can just get away from just being on the wards. Um, they had a pet therapy, which again, dogs are very popular and therapists made sure that they were around. Um, we've had talking therapies offer, so not just the big NHS one, but there's a talking homerton one that we have definitely availed and we also are very lucky in therapies to have some psychologists that work within our team. So just kind of getting some ideas of how to debrief, how to contain space um, and create that sense of it's OK not to be OK. And, and how do we you know, keep carrying on? But equally, the whole analogy of putting your mask on before you kind of help others and making sure that you're looking after yourself. So real Maslow's hierarchy basics of drink enough, you know, eat healthy, sleep enough. Try and avoid some social media if you can. That's, yeah, some of the things we've done. Debbie, are you, in terms of your family sort of situation, are you, or any of you particularly, living away from family at the moment? Um, has some of you had to sacrifice family to move away and around whilst you do the work? Yeah, so, um, so fortunately, my, my daughters don't live at home, but they live away and then they have children. But... One lives quite far and one lives quite near, but because of where I'm working and they've got their shielding and they've got babies, um, one's now, I've told them she's pregnant again. Um, I can't, thank you. Um, I just can't, I just can't feel comfortable to see them. We FaceTime, but I've had my vaccine today and I already had COVID antibodies. So this is like a booster, I was told. <laughs> What we're seeing, again, my, my colleagues, is the tiredness, uh, the exhaustion of my team, the mental health uh, of them. Uh, and, and it's quite amazing the little you have to do to actually keep the team going. I, have a, you know, I do have a very good operational, very hands-on team, uh, and, and we all do get on well together. Uh, but it's amazing what some chocolate does um, it's amazing just to stop and ask people just to stop in the middle of everything they're doing and just say, like, 10 minutes, how's everyone feeling? What are you dealing with? Or what's happening at home? Trying to stir up things that are not related to where we are at this moment, because we hear and see many things from across our wards, our ITU departments that we're probably not used to in, in the main because of the work we do. And my team are seeing it and, and they're seeing some very uncomfortable things. And so we're just making sure we give them an opportunity to, to, to express that in whichever way that means. And thankfully for my team, that's usually a laugh and a joke about something. Um, uh, and it, it does just keep us going. But um, it's, um, it, it's not, certainly not easy at this moment. But I think the lot of, the lot, uh, a lot of the learning we did in wave one has really helped us where we are now. And what we had to concentrate on to put in place uh, in readiness for this and unfortunately because we don't know when it's going to end what we keep learning to, to put forward for uh, as, as we go forward but it's a good way that you and your team are keeping spirits high and and i always find having some sort of sense of humor through everything is very important because otherwise we all go mad yeah. so we've got to find the, the light relief and the light moments to be able to mm -hmm. to think about something else and to be able to smile and laugh about things because laughing is very important through the day uh, when it all gets too much, we all need to have a, a laugh every now and again. Catherine, just turning to you, how is maybe how, how is morale in general? I mean, everyone here has been very uh, chipper and, and kind of been very upfront and, and upbeat about things. But are you picking up that sort of thing across the whole the whole hospital? So I think from all the way through that the, our kind of understanding of the impact this has had on staff well well-being has been kind of forefront and and we've probably all individually and collectively gone through the highs and lows over the last um uh, few months I, I have to say i think this week for us um starting vaccinating has probably 
had one of the single most significant impacts on people feeling that there is something a future out of this um and the queues out the door downstairs here where they've been vaccinating have been have been re really kind of hopeful for for people um and across all our services we provide community services we provide a care home people have found different ways um to uh, acknowledge the how hard it's been to look after each other and to try and acknowledge things that you know we've still managed to have a Christmas we've still managed to have Diwali we've still managed to do all of those things but it hasn't been it hasn't been any way like it would have been but I think everybody's mentioned family and the Homerton family is probably the one thing that we've all held on to um in the last 12 months and we have appreciated the donations the that the community of, of City and Hackney donated food, they donated scrubs, they donated their time. Um, we were overwhelmed with um, a, a, a support, um, but the support we need now is um, stay at home, help us, um, because actually that will get us all out of this, whatever um, our role is, and we'll get society out of it. But if I may just say, you know, on behalf of, of, um, of everyone else, um, who may be that bold, but a huge thank you to all of you for all the hard work, the, 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 the sleepless nights, the, the lack of sleep, the, the stress, the anxiety, the exhaustion and, and everything that you're doing. We are so grateful. You're all in my thoughts and uh, Catherine and I and all the children talk about all of you guys every day. Um, so we're making sure the children understand the sacrifices that all of you are making. Um, so thank you so, so much. And thank you for your time today. I know how busy you are, but I just wanted to pop in and just say, um, you know, good luck and we're all thinking of you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you for showing an interest uh, in the Homerton. Thank, thank you for talking it. to us.